Good evening and welcome to the uh, November 24th, 2014 special uh, meeting of Long, Long Meadow Select Board. I apologize, folks. We just looked around and we still do not have our American flag present. Uh, we'll make sure we have it in for next meeting. We're going to have some, a slight modification to our normal rules tonight. We are, we are meeting for one sole uh, issue, and that will be to talk about the voting irregularities that took place at our recent town meeting. To that, uh, to that avail, we're going to have, the agenda has three parts on it. One is a report from the town moderator regarding the special town meeting. The number two is a discussion regarding this report. And number three is take any action deemed necessary relative to the report and the discussion. What I would like to do before we hear from any visitor comments or any comments from any of the board members is that I would like to have the moderator come up and brief us, the entire room, on, on exactly what the status is and, and what he knows about what took place so that we are all on the same level of understanding when we do move into comments. After that point, uh, I will allow visitor comments to take place only relevant to the discussion. The only discussion before us tonight is the vote taking. It's not the articles. It's not any article that was under consideration, nor will they entertain any discussion either for or against any article that was under consideration. Our sole purpose is to talk about the voting irregularities. So if we could start with our town moderator. Mr. Mahalik, oh, there he is, or Kelly. Mr. Chairman, do you want to invite the clerk to uh, participate as well? Oh, sure. We can bring the clerk up to uh, the town clerk. Catherine. And for the purpose of the record, could you please state your name? Catherine Ingram. Uh, I, I've been given no notice of what this uh, what this hearing is. It, it uh, sounds to me very much like an inquisition. Uh, and I'll say this, and I'll say it quick, and I'll say it final. Uh, there are certain have already made public uh, that uh, certain ir irregularities, uh, voting ir irregularities, were made at the uh, at the town meeting last. That the right thing is, we were all there. The right thing and the fair thing to do is to call another special town meeting uh, to correct the problem. I'll have some remarks at a later time, but as far as I'm concerned, the issue was closed. We were all there that night. <clears throat> it's time for the board uh, to do the right thing, the fair thing, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Okay, okay thank you. Would the town clerk like to update us a little bit on any information? Well, I've actually presented you with some information. I hope you got the email, and I think Stephen made some copies for you. Um, that we did have questions in two different sections during the counts that took place. Um, Mike actually had firsthand knowledge. Uh, someone did walk up to him and give him that information. Um, I did speak to the counters in question, and they did write a letter uh, confirming um, what we suspected that there was. Um, a problem with the vote count in two sections um, at the town meeting. So the and I want to add one other thing. Yes, uh, the responsibility, the responsibility for uh, running an orderly town meeting is my responsibility. So uh, I want to make that clear. However it happened, it happened. And it wasn't by purpose, it wasn't by design, it happened. So if you're looking for, uh, you know, people to blame, the blame stops with me. I'm the moderator, I'm charged by statute with running the town meeting, that's it. And I, I do understand your statement, and I, I guess for the benefit of the board, the, you have provided additional information for the board to absorb and to help in the decision-making process, and that was required because the board was not aware of all the details. Now, meetings that I had with yourself and, and the town manager, the other board members were not present. We've tried to relay that information, and now it's been officially relayed to them through the correspondence that you provided this afternoon, and I thank you for doing that. Um, yes, sir. Just so we're clear what you're talking about, 
what I've received is a memo from uh, Catherine Ingram and two letters. Mm -hmm. Is there any other documents? No, or, I, I, I haven't seen anything from Mr. Kallick. That's what we have. That's, that's the official okay. documents that we have. And I think Mr. Kallick just made his statement, as far as he's concerned, his personal statement on this issue. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Before we go ahead and uh, uh, open up, I said I would, I would entertain some visitor comments. Is there anyone that, uh, in, the, in the crowd that would like to submit a visitor's con uh, comment? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, what's the Just come up to the microphone, please. Identify your name and address, please. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Adam Goodman, and I'm with the 40, uh, 63 Blackcliff Road, Wild Meadow. I'm coming before you tonight to talk about the town meeting vote with regard to the proposed zoning change by Wilmot Shops. It was evident from where I was sitting that there were serious counting errors by multiple counters during that vote. In addition to the gross incompetence that I per personally witnessed by vote counter Mr. Santos, I was made aware of two other vote counters that sir, approached the town clerk. Sir, could, I, could I ask that? You keep your statements positive. This is not a. This is not a core. We're not. I'm we're not. not in, I'd rather not impugn anybody. I'm not impugning our, anybody. I'm making a statement to exactly the way what you asked. The way you worded that, give an indication that possibly someone could have done it on purpose. I didn't and say that someone did it on purpose. Okay. I, said I just want to make sure everybody's that's, aware. Does not mean that someone did yeah, anything I on purpose. I think the First Amendment still applies. The uh, First Amendment does apply, Mr. Grant. I'm well so aware of that. I, I'm I trying to have civility well to this meeting. I don't think my statement is in any way taking side to one thing or the other. I'm talking about the democratic process. Proceed, sir. Thank you very much. These abnormalities with the county procedure create results that were potentially incorrect. Please do not mistake my concerns about this vote with my support for the pros proposed project. These are two separate issues and should be treated as such by the community and this board. As a voted member of the select board, you have the responsibility of this community to ensure that the democratic process is upheld that every vote is heard, that every voice is heard, and every vote is counted. With so many people in this community concerned about the potential legality of the last week's vote, why not play it safe and ask the town to vote again on this project? I know from the town meeting that a majority of this board is opposed to the financial benefits this project will bring. Reasons given were increased traffic from a drive through pharmacy, low-end retail stores, as threatened by a member of the board, and overall mistrust from the property owner. Many of these issues can be argued either way, but that is for the residents of Law Meadow to decide and not a five-member select board. Your personal feelings about the project should not outweigh your obligation to ensure that the democratic process is respected. Your time to oppose the zoning changes at a town meeting and not a select board meeting. Law Meadow is a wonderful community and I have lived here all my life. I believe that over the years our town residents have done a wonderful and educated job at voting for what is right for this community. I urge you to put your personal opinions and egos aside to look at what's best for this community and not your own personal agendas. A vote for a special town meeting is the only solution to represent what democracy is all about. Thank you. Mr. Nolet. Mr. Nolet raised his hand first. I would like to remind everybody that I, I would like Sorry, you to refrain from talking about the actual article. We are not here showing support or anything. We are here only talking about voter irregularities. Please. My name is Jerry Nolet at 724 Frank Smith Road. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and the board for hearing me. I have prepared uh, two uh, statements for the board's review and consideration. <coughs> It's imperative that the town, through the Board of Selectmen, apply an apparent and appropriate remedy for the voting irregularities which occurred during our November 18th town meeting. It was reported that votes recorded by staff assigned to assist the town meeting moderator were not taken accurately. The only issue before the select board this evening is correcting the vote counting irregularities that had been reported. Our residents deserve the right to have their votes at town meeting accurately counted, reflecting the will of the people. And I'm going to, my second comment deals with the planning board of which I was a member. The planning board is charged with protecting the town by applying both bylaw 
and charter regulations. The thought of providing a carte blanche to the petitioner following the change in zoning does not reflect the history of the planning board. The elected body refers reports directly to the residents of Longmeadow, similar to the Board of Selectmen. They are your equal. Their analysis requires several elements, including a public hearing, a site and design review, traffic studies paid by the petitioner, parking space availability, architectural plans, signage, and much more. It is a demanding process designed to protect the integrity of our community. The Planning Board takes that responsibility seriously, as we all do. So tonight I'm pleading that please agree this evening, all of you, to take the appropriate, fair, and reasonable remedial action on the issue before you, which is and should be completely unrelated to any previous discussion. Thank you for your attention. I have a copy for the chair and also a copy for the clerk. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. More? Okay. Any other visitor comments? Thank you. Kurt Friedman, 24 Ridge. Uh, first, what were the voter irregularities? They were mentioned, but I have not heard any specifics on them. That's a good question. We have one letter given to us by one of the counters that he stated that he did not count one section of the bleachers. He felt that it was only uh, visitors in that section, and he failed to count that section. And this was on the, this, he admitted this himself. He, he came forward and says, at the end of the meeting, I believe, he came forward and told the moderator, he said, I, I goofed up. He said, I failed to count the one section. And that was for every count, that was for every vote that was taken for our hand count. If that were the case, people raise their hands and then after the counter they drop them. So if that was the case, then we would have been left at the end of the count with a group of people with their hands raised. And I don't think we're, I'm not, I'm not going to dispute the word. This is what the man stated occurred. He said that he did not count the people in that section. It, it was also reported to me at the end of the meeting by one of the people that sat in that section mm -hmm. that he was in the section and he noticed that his votes were never counted. If that were the case, then that whole mm -hmm. group of people would have been there with their hands up and everyone would have noticed it, including the moderator. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I have some question whether you answered or if the moderator is able to answer it. It's in most of the votes that I've seen as a citizen, it's simply a show of hands and the moderator rules, you know, mm -hmm. is, is there a majority or a two-thirds right. majority? Sometimes they ask for um, a show of hands with a count, which mm -hmm. was and that happens from time to time. Right. That's happened in this case. Are we going to be going to paper ballots in the future for every count? And are we prepared for the additional time that would take? That's been under. Is that within the right of the moderator to implement as a, a actual paper ballots? Yeah, this is moderator. And that discussion has not taken place yet. Okay. And then when, when does one decide whether you have paper ballots or not? That discussion will take place with the moderator if it's deemed appropriate from the select board. Okay. Um, I feel that, um, I mean, I was there, um, and I think the, the subject counter who, he counted our group and everyone seemed to be satisfied. Perhaps the perception was is after people put their hands down after it was counted, they saw in front of them that nobody had their hands up, and they felt that maybe their vote wasn't counted, but actually it was. That's how it's done. Um, I also might say that the tone with a very close vote, um, and I saw this once again with my own experiences when I ran for office, uh, it's almost this sense of anarchy. And I believe that's what's happening here. Uh, I believe the vote was taken. And I think that because it's a closed vote, somehow people are choosing this as an opportunity to try to create an opportunity for a revote. And I think it's rather 
um, objectionable. I think that, I don't want to get into the details of the issue, but I think that the best thing for our town, since we have Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, although I don't celebrate Christmas myself in terms of respect for the rest of the citizenry, I don't think this is a good time to have another special town <coughs> meeting because it's just going to be awkward for people to attend. And then if we have bad weather and all, um, it's just not a good time. I think that the best thing for this town is for everybody to get their facts together. And the concerns that were raised uh, that night were because there's a lack of specificity that was provided and the voters really could not support the project in sufficient numbers. And I think that the, I think that the uh, article should come back at the spring meeting and everyone will be fully informed and the promoters of the project will have more than ample time to provide greater detail and specificity so that the voters can make a decision from a position of information. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Get this one first. Pardon? This one over here in the green jacket. Yeah, the first one. Green jacket? And then you. My name is Ann Cowan, 165 Lawrence Drive. And uh, I have nothing prepared, but I, I would like to second the previous speaker's uh, comment about having, if in fact they do decide to go forward with another vote on this topic, to do it at the May meeting. I think the people who were pro the uh, expansion decided to move forward at a special town meeting because they obviously realized that a smaller number of people would be needed to sway the vote. And it, unfortunately, it backfired on them. and. Obviously, there's some discussion of whether the vote was appropriate or not. But I do say if another vote is con to be considered, it should be done as part of the May regular town meeting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Hello, I'm Carolyn Ryan from 29 Warren Terrace. Um, I have no prepared remarks either, and I normally um, do not get involved in politics too much, but I was at that town meeting, and immediately after the count was taken, you could tell by adding the numbers up in one section that they didn't make sense. Um, and it wasn't just myself, there were other people around me that noticed it. I've been out in town, I've had people come up, and I've been in conversations with people, and they said, you know, did you realize that that vote couldn't have happened? If you counted the heads and you counted the chairs and you counted the two numbers that were given for the pro and the con, they didn't add up. You can count the number of chairs. There were not enough chairs for that number of people to be sitting in that one section. That was what I observed. Somebody else that I saw that I don't even know their name, I have no idea who they are, saw something and he said, I was sitting above that section and saw the very same thing. So there were many people on one side of the room, I don't know what happened on the others, that it was obvious that there was a problem with the count, very obvious. Go back and look at the tapes, count the chairs, count the heads. It didn't add up. <coughs> the point is that people have a sense out there, those of us that are not active in all these things, that we were wronged in terms of everyone was wronged. We don't have an accurate count. Something needs to be done about it. And I think, you know, it's up to you people as the select board to make the right decision and right the wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Richard, can I ask her a question? Sure. Miss? Oh, I'm sorry. We had one of the selectmen wanted to ask you a question. Certainly. You were talking about the section you were in. What, yes. What section was that? Um, how do you describe it? Um, as you walk into the gym, um, if you were all in the front, it would be um, the back half on the left side, but very close to the divider so that I could see the front right section. Um, and then some other person that I heard talking to was apparently right above that front right section. I was up several um, rows in the bleachers, probably halfway up, so I could look down. You, you look down and you can count heads and you can count chairs. So, so. so you're saying, the, so you were in the bleacher, are you saying the, the section you were sitting in, you mm -hmm. thought there were irregularities or you thought there were irregularities no. in a section you saw? In a section I saw. I'm not okay. sure about within my own section because I couldn't see behind me and I couldn't see to the left of me. But where I could see um, <coughs> diagonally, I guess, in front of me and I was looking down, I could see that. It just, you could count heads after, but some people had left, but that number of people had not left the room when they decided to close the doors. Um, and you know, you, it, you just, it didn't add up. It just didn't make sense. And right away, people were saying, this doesn't make sense, a recount. It was, you could hear it in the bleachers right away. 
So people saw things that weren't accurate. And when you're saying the back left, you're saying the left as you face the, face the front? As you face the front, yes. So okay. if you were to divide it into one, two, I was in two. Okay, thank okay. you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Ed Stambovsky, 235 Redfern Drive. I'm not sure why this meeting is taking more than 20 minutes at this point. I don't know the moderator, um, and I'm not faulting him or anybody else for what happened last week. But if he comes forth and he says there were voting irregularities and it's confirmed by a letter from somebody who was actually taking the count, I'm not sure what the discussion is. I mean, we should be entitled to another vote. It's as simple as that. Two people are saying there's irregularities. They were both involved with the process. I mean, I can say the same thing. I was sitting on the left side all the way down near the front, and I looked at the group in front of me, and I saw the way they were counted. They weren't counted correctly because there weren't that many people in that section. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to say that you've got a letter, signed letter, from a person who took the count. You got a comment from the moderator came forward and said there were voting irregularities. You have to take a revote. Simple as that. Thank you, Ed. Any, uh, Richard? Richard Elias, 608 Frank Smith Road. I don't know what happened at the select at the meeting. It's, there's irregularities or there is not. It's your responsibility to make that decision with the information that you have in front of you. And if you think there's a remedial action has to be taken to make a decision for the town's benefit, which is the best. I've heard people saying you can put it off to the next town meeting. You can have a new town, a new one now. But I think you have another option if you decide there's sufficient evidence to say that <coughs> something has to be done and to make it, they use the term fair. Well, that night was very cold, and a lot of uh, our residents couldn't make it to that thing, so we don't know what they were thinking, the older residents for the most part. The other option is if you think there's sufficient cause instead of having a second town uh, meeting to put it into the uh, ballot for this question, a special uh, election. I don't know whether it costs more or not, but if you really want everybody in the town to have the option of letting their thoughts be heard, you might wish to consider that. I thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Anyone else? Okay, no more visitor comments. Okay, select board comments. Okay, go ahead. I, until 4, 11 p.m. today, we had nothing other than hearsay of people telling us that people told them that things happened. And late this <coughs> afternoon is when we received signed letters from, from people. So, uh, you know, people said, we know what's happened. I, I question whether we know what happened. I mean, uh, there, there are more allegations going around than, than there were people in the, in the meeting hall almost. I've gotten letters from uh, somebody who knows that for a fact, somebody in front of them was holding up two ballots. And did they get counted twice or did they not get counted twice? And, and when we say that we know counters didn't count a section or miscounted a section, I believe that unless you were part of the counting team who knew where the counters were counting, it's difficult to say that their counts were correct or not, short of the counter saying their counts were correct or not, or they missed a section because counters didn't necessarily count the areas that people saw. They didn't necessarily stand in front of each person. We didn't have what we used to call a standing count where people stood up and as you were counted, you were pointed to and you'd sit down and you knew you were clicked. We didn't go through that system. But you know what we've got is, a, and I'll read from one of the comments that said, uh, uh, I did not include in my counting anyone seated in the bleacher section which contained visitors, non-voters. Okay. You know, is, is that a mistake? Or is it reasonable for somebody to not count the section containing visitors, non-voters? Now, the fact that there were voters sitting in that section, maybe they should have been counted, maybe they should not have been counted. I, too, believe 
that we need to get it right. And we're going to get it right. Uh, but the, the allegations that have been going around really have annoyed me for the last week because from my perspective, they've all been, I don't think I was counted. When in fact, unless you know that the counter counted you, you don't know you weren't counted or you don't know you were counted. <coughs> the, the allegations that I looked across the room and they couldn't have counted that section. You know, we don't know what section, because we still haven't talked to the counters, to know what section they were assigned to. They may have been assigned to non-contiguous sections, so that they counted a section here and skipped a section in another section. And I heard, you know, in front of me a couple of counters talking about which sections they would count, and I suspect that, from what I heard, at least one of those counters did count non-contiguous sections. So I, I, I caution people to go out and say, we know it was bad. You know, one of the things we said is, well, clearly there were, there were only 380 votes cast before it and 380 votes cast after it, and there were 420 votes at one of these votes, so clearly it was double counted. There were 457, is that right, Catherine? 465. 465 people who signed in to vote at, town, at, at the town meeting. So anything less than 465 <coughs> votes is legitimately a, a potential correct vote. So, you know, I, I, I apologize to the people who, you know, who th think that there was a, a, an absolute error going on here. Uh, you know, there may have been an error. There may not have been an error. Personally, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm very concerned about upsetting what's a democratic process of voting. On the other hand, we've got a town moderator saying that he thinks we should have another vote, and that's going to sway a lot of uh, weight with me. I'm concerned about the, the difficulty for the town to get an equal vote, uh, to, to do it whether it's through a town meeting very shortly or a town meeting a little bit down the way, but I think that's probably what's going to happen, recognizing that given the report of the planning board, uh, the petitioners could come back in the spring anyway. Uh, the planning board, having had a favorable vote for this, there is no requirement that the, or no prohibition against coming back at the next town meeting. So it's probably going to happen anyway, and I think we need to get it right. So my comment to this, my fellow select board members is the, the information I think came in late. I think it came in a little bit skewed. I think we've got one piece of information that at, at best is, is, says there's an issue and the town, town moderator. Any other comments? Right. Well, no, go ahead, Marie. Oh, excuse me, I didn't see you raise your hand. Um, town moderators are effective, elected official. He's the one who's in charge of town meeting, and if he comes up and he's investigated this and feels that there has been a problem with the vote count, uh, I support our town moderator's decision and to bring a special town meeting because we are not here to reinvestigate this whole process. That's up to the town moderator to do. And uh, as I said, he's elected, and that really weighs very heavily in my mind on which way we need to go with this. And there's no saying that the votes that weren't counted were for or against. It's just a matter of the vo a voice of the people have to be heard. And uh, as, as soon as our moderator came up and told us what he felt needed to be done, he has my support. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Alex? Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, I'll echo what Mark was saying before. Literally, until, you know, an hour and a half ago, we didn't have anything. Now we have two pages. Um, and I, I do take to heart the resident comments that we need to separate out the question of whether you support Article 13 or not. Um, I voted against it, but I also stood up for the person who was speaking in favor of a new vote, because I believed he has the right to speak up and voice that opinion. I don't think the First Amendment's been uh, repealed yet. Um, I. I think we need to know some more facts. I mean, the fact that the town moderator came up and, and said, you know, the right thing to do is to call a special town meeting and that's all I'm going to say, that does not constitute an investigation to me. This, what we received an hour and a half ago, is the beginnings of an investigation that and again, the problem is that you all in the audience, you all in watching on TV, do not have these letters. And they are, as Mr. Gold was indicating, 
less than certain. Um, even the uh, letter that relates to possible double counting says that I am now wondering if it is possible I did not reset my counter. So that's, that to me means uncertainty. And the other sort of obvious question that I don't think anybody's really wanted to look into is if there are problems like this that came up that were serious, and I'm going to assume everybody who's there is, is acting, you know, in their highest, you know, calling of civic duty, why they didn't bring that to the attention at the time when the problem could have been resolved. I mean, Article 13 took place well before the uh, adjournment of the meeting. I mean, there's probably a good hour. I mean, vote counters, anybody could have gone to the town moderator. And again, it's those obvious questions that I think deserve an answer. Um, you know, one thing I am certain of is that there would be no court uh, that would be willing to overturn the results of an election unless they actually heard directly from the people that were involved and that understood exactly how the vote counting system worked and understood exactly how uh, there were or were not deficiencies. So I'm suspending judgment until uh, we get sufficient facts to understand exactly what did happen. And I would like to make one other point is the select board had absolutely no power over how votes were counted or not counted. Nobody ever consulted me. I don't think anybody ever consulted anybody else on this board. Um, had they consulted with me and had the problem been you know, brought to my attention at the time, I would have tried to resolve it right then and there. Because that moment where everybody's there and having invested a, at the end of the day five hours of everybody's time, I think it was deserving to try to get it right at the time. So I, th I think we need to be careful uh, to, to get it right and uh, not to allow uh, our feelings on the substantive question to influence whether we have another town meeting. Any other comments? Do we have the opportunity to ask any questions? Sure. Who okay. would you like to ask a question? Or? Well, I have a, I have a question. I, and, you know, I understand the moderator may not have been notified of the meeting, and I'm not trying to do an inquisition, but I have questions much um, akin to what Alex was asking because, um, you know, I think someone mentioned, it must have been, might have been Mr. Goodman, who said, you know, that the select board is here to ensure the voting rights. And actually, that's not us. That's the town clerk and the moderator. When it comes to town meeting and to elections, we set the warrant. We set the election dates. Uh, as Mr. Grant said, from that point forward, it's out of our hands. But I, I'm, what my concerns are is that, again, and I'll reiterate, you know, 4 o'clock this afternoon, there was an email sent. I didn't read it till just before I got in here, actually, as I got in here a little early because I didn't see my email after, after that time. Um, when anything, you know, is perhaps, maybe, I'm questioning, I don't believe that's definitive. And, and my concerns and my questions would be is, what do you constitute as irregularities? Is the irregularity that someone wasn't counted? And I can tell you folks from sitting in front of the table, when someone says that, you know, I counted a row and I didn't think there was enough people there, I've done that. I played that game at town meeting trying to figure out how many people was there, were there, and I've, I've been wrong. I've felt like at times that may, perhaps my vote may not have been counted, even though I'm sitting in the front row. Um, and I, and, and I, I always question this, you know, had there been a one vote difference to the affirmative of the motion, would we have had a motion to recount or reconsider? Would we be doing this particular item? On, would this special meeting be held if the, if the motion actually passed? Mm -hmm. um, and those are the questions that I have, because I, I, I'm really concerned that there were irregularities that were brought during town meeting and identified, mm -hmm. and no action was taken, and now we're here. And we're being told that we have to right a wrong. And I don't know if, A, a wrong was committed, because uh, you, you guys should take a look at this. This public record is distributed to the board. You tell me if a wrong was committed, okay, that's number one. Number two is, there's, it, it, tell me, what, what was the process? Something was, you guys were notified during town meeting, and we haven't, I haven't heard yet what happened with the point in time where the moderator slash town clerk were notified of an irregularity. And as Alex said, there was a point in time to take measure, which was then. 
And I, I you know, to call a special town meeting, and oh. how would the process would work is the planning board would have to meet, convene a, 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 a what do you call that, public, public forum, board. which has to have a 14-day notice. That brings us right before, right up to Hanukkah slash Christmas slash New Year's and all that other fun stuff to before we can actually set a special town meeting. So before I, I obligate my vote to having a town meeting in the middle of the holiday season, I want to know what the irregularities were, why they weren't addressed at that particular point in time, and can you definitively tell me that there were votes not counted, not just in a written statement. Are these, I haven't, as Alex said, I don't know who the people, I know Mr. Santos only from years in town. Mm -hmm. I don't know the other person. And I'm not judging what they're saying, but I've also heard accusations about our counters, that they were purposely not clearing their counter, yeah. that they were purposely not, you know, not counting the right votes because they may have been for or against it. And I don't, I don't believe that. Oh, no, no, I'm not, no, that's not reference to you. This is other things that I've heard since Wednesday morning. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not addressing, I'm, no problem. okay. But I was, that's what I've heard since Wednesday morning, that people were pur pur uh, purposely not clearing their counter. And I, again, I want to know what the irregularities were, when you knew about them, and why they weren't taken care of until the next morning. And, th and that's the concern I have with calling a special town meeting, because that part, other than this, hasn't been explained. Did it? Yeah, I'm sorry, how we had a stand up? The question is on whether there were irregularities or whether there were not irregularities. I believe that the investigation was thoroughly done by our moderator and it was done carefully and that's why there was no rush to where that we were going to be today. We had this in writing, there were we were told ahead of time that this was coming down the pike, that we were going to be hearing from the moderator. I feel he's made it very clear. I think they did a very thorough investigation. I know people have been walking up and they have been concerned and they've been stating their concerns that their votes weren't counted, but it was not subjective. It was something that we feel, I feel the moderator did a very good job and I think you took the measures you felt you needed to do. This is not an easy decision to make. I know that uh, you had to link, think long and hard on whether you were going to go ahead and request a special town meeting. I don't feel that this is a court that needs to reinvestigate it, needs to cross-examine the counters to see exactly what they said or did. If they came forward and honestly said there was a mistake, the moderator feels that he has the truth of the matter, I say we go ahead and we move forward on a vote on whether we're going to have a special town meeting. And that, I believe, the power of the moderator is the one who does the investigation. And I respect his work. Could, could I, Moray, do you have some superior knowledge as to what the town moderator did or did not do? I mean, because he got up here and he said, you know, call a special town meeting, I'm not going to say anything more. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's a report of investigation, uh, I, I don't know what to say. Um, so that's, I, I just don't get that. Um, you know, and it's up to, I, you know, he, he can say what he wants. Uh, but it, to me, you know, in the absence of somebody presenting a report of investigation, you know, there, that answers these sort of obvious questions, those questions remain. Um, and then I have a, do you mind if I ask a question for a council? I, I, the council hasn't been brought into it. it was just, uh, <laughs> what's the purpose, Alan? No, I mean, what is, what is Okay, the it has to do with the legality discussion? of the meeting. Okay, so, fine. All right, so there we go. Dave, um, can you come up to the, so, oh, you've got a mic right there. Yeah, yeah. so uh, sure. Dave, you, you mentioned about certain timing requirements relating to Chapter 40A, Section 40A, 5. Section 5, yes. And it, the, the vote, uh, the um, public hearing of the planning board had to take place, um, and I read the statute, so I agree with you, within 65 days of the referral of the select board? Yes. Like, okay. And then you noted that the referral took place on July 21st July 21st but the public hearing didn't take place until October 29th correct so that would have been too late am, well, or am I, I reading I, that I wrong? talked to uh, uh, someone in the Attorney General's office who well this would have come to the Attorney General's office if the irregularity had been a one vote passing of this because the Attorney General's office rules on all zone changes and that would have given them given that office an, an opening to look at the, uh, at the process. And I was told that the 
65-day timeline is uh, to make sure that the process keeps going and that it isn't rigidly applied. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, the Attorney General's office, as I said in my email uh, or last, I think it was on Friday, does require that there be another planning board hearing prior to reconsideration. Okay. And uh, that so would need to take place uh, after uh, the planning board hearing used to take place after the statutory 14-day notice of uh, posting and publication. And then once that has taken place, that would clear the way for it to be voted on at a town meeting. So in my hearing, so is it, so was, was it, was the public hearing too late or no? The public hearing, no, it was not. Yeah, the October it was, 29th. It was, it, my best uh, understanding is that it was not too late. That had that, that okay. had, had that, had the zoning uh, district change passed, the timing of the uh, planning board hearing would not have been an issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to speak. I think, I think the public needs to understand several things. Number one, I was in a meeting on this issue at 8 o'clock or 8.30 or whatever time it was the following morning. <coughs> By that time, there had been discussions taking place between the town clerk and the town manager. Uh, I called the town clerk and I said it was reported to me last night by a, a resident on the floor of counts not being taken in a bleacher section. She said, well, that's odd. She said, we've got this and we've got that. We immediately assembled the town attorney, the town moderator, the town manager, the town clerk, and myself in a meeting. And we started discussing what we had, what information we had, and what the, the reports had been given to us. We weren't talking about the legality of them. We were just saying, what do we have? And that started the process. Now, I think everybody must understand that the select board's under what they call open meeting law. It clearly states that we just can't get on the phone and talk back and forth freely on these issues to every member on this board. The only way that we can legally exchange information to more than two people is right in this room in front of the public eye. I think you've heard about the open meeting law. You've even heard activity of this board of the open meeting law. So there are a lot of restraints placed on us for communicating and getting information back and forth. This is Monday night. We're not even one week into when this meeting took place. And since that time, there's been a lot of work done behind the scenes to try to get this information to the board members in different email correspondence. Uh, they have not been in a vacuum. Is that we are hampered in many respects. Uh, we have tried to meet the needs of them on the information exchange, but I want to dispel the, 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 the thought that the information has not been made available. The verbal exchange of this information has been made available. Uh, this information has been known for the last couple of days, and we got the statements today from the from the two uh, people that took the votes because that was one of the one of the requests of a select board member that we have a factual statement. Uh, I, I very strongly have faith in the town moderator. This is his meeting. I, I was part of the meeting. I understood that things started to happen during the meeting and you couldn't stop the meeting. We did not know, as far as I did not know until the next day on how many things had been recorded and reported about this meeting. My wife, in fact, sat in one of the sections and told me after we got home that she said, there's no way there was that many votes. She said, I was in the section. And I said, why didn't she get up and say it? She said, well, she said, I figured maybe I was mistaken. Now, there was not just one person that got up and talked about this, folks. There is a long, long list of people that have mentioned this meeting. I don't believe in conspiracy theories that all these people could have got together within a two and a half minute period and started saying, we think there's things going wrong. Things apparently did go wrong at that meeting. We may not have absolute definite proof on all the, all the things that have been mentioned, but the evidence uh, is there whether you want to accept it as factual or not. It's not all pinpoint down, legal, pounded down, but we do have a, a statement from a person that said, I did not count the votes that were in that bleacher. That bleacher is the same bleacher that the man reported to me that he was sitting in. He said, my votes weren't being counted. And he stated along with other members. I won't even tell you how many people were there, but he pretty well knew how many was there and he knew how the votes had gone down in that section. And that was totally disconnected with any other section in the room. We've had other reports over in this section. 
We had two school board members that came up during the process and reported that they said, we think there's some double counting taking place even in front of us. The two of the clerks are possibly were over trapping on their clicking areas. Uh, it was errors. There was no intent. There's no evidence that would say that there was intent. There's no evidence to indicate these things are so diverse, it's almost impossible to believe that this many people could have got together and suddenly said, we think there was a problem without there actually being problems. I mean, my wife certainly doesn't have a dog in this fight, believe me. So this information has been brought out the best we could with the restraints we have. I don't think the board, uh, in some cases, will ever have enough information to make a decision with 100% certainty. I don't think that's what our lives are surrounded with. We never will have 100% certainty. We take the best of the facts that we have placed before us and we make a decision that best meets the needs of the people. In my case, I have clearly seen enough and I've heard enough to indicate that there was something took place in that room with the votes being counted and recorded for the people present. I feel very obligated that their votes should be counted and they should be represented as with every other citizen in this community. It's going to be up to our board on how we deal with this issue. But to disenfranchise the voters and put them off, say, four or five months, I don't think, I don't think hits the, the level of, uh, of um, expertise and expediency from this board. We don't have to do a thing, ladies and gentlemen, and that issue, whatever issues were there, can roll back onto the next meeting if they're pushed down there. We don't have to do a thing. So we can disenfranchise the voters and go home tonight without worrying about those votes that were taken. I care about them, and, and, and I, I vote for a special town meeting. I vote that will be my vote. I think we should. I think it's, a, it's the best thing we can do, and I think it's the fairest thing we can do. Any other comments by the board members? I just have a Sure, Paul. Am I going to get any answer to my question about what the irregularities are? Because, quite yeah, frankly, what you just presented as sure. fact is, is, isn't is fact, because there is no fact in here as to who wasn't counted. And, and again, I... I, I I really do have a concern that um, unless none of these folks have said that they didn't count votes, they say they may not have counted someone in the visitor section. They may not have counted, they may not have cleared their clicker. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything in here that says I didn't clear my clicker, I didn't count those people. It doesn't say well, did this, it. This gentleman clearly states yeah. he did not count that section. But he, he didn't count the people in the he visitor section. He did not section. count that section, Can period. I, and well, we have people that said they were sitting in that section. Now, I don't have the statement from who came up here. I wish the man would come up to me now and tell me who you were to put the statement in that says, I was in that section and the bolts weren't counted. Maybe that would be another piece of uh, information for the board to, to study. But we do have a statement from a counter that said he didn't count bolts in that section. And I have somebody that said they sat in that section. That's what I have. Yeah. Richard, just to answer Paul's question. Yeah, please. There are two uh, irregularities that we um, have, um, I say, testimony, firsthand reporting from. Is it, are you, can I? You're going to let me. Information aside really? from this. Do I? I mean, I'm just trying to, to figure out what I'm saying here. Mr. Mr. Grant, you've had the opportunity to speak. All right. I'm just trying to let's find out our, if this can if we he's got please, information that's okay, not here. Unbiasedly, can so, we give our town manager an opportunity to speak? I, and I understand that the fact that this occurred on a on the most controversial thing um, on the agenda that night is really unfortunate. Um, and the reason why we got to here was when we realized um, that night, after the votes were taken, that there may have been inaccuracies or um, irregularities that there was this issue, and the, and the longer the night went, the more it piled up to the point where, like I said, we met first thing in the morning to say, do we have a problem? What are our options? What do we need to do? And the, the, and the letters which we got this afternoon essentially are from the counters and affirm all of the things we heard, and they weren't really allegations. I mean, count, uh, one of the counters reported to the moderator at the end of that town meeting that night and um, that he did not count that section. And there were town meeting voters sitting in the section because it was right next to me. And I saw them sitting with their green cards, and to be honest with you, it occurred to me that may be a little confusing because it was awfully close to the visitor section. So the two, to answer your question, what are the uh, irregularities? One is that a certain number of voters, and I don't know we know the number, did not get counted. And the counter said, I didn't count them. Two, a certain number of votes were not recorded 
and or reported correctly. And that's what the second letter says. Can you explain that? Because I, that's not what the second letter says. The second letter says I may have not cleared my counter. It doesn't say I did not clear well, my counter. Well, the counter, and, and, and you know, the thing I want to make before I answer that, the, the counters are also our election workers, and they are essentially volunteers. And they've done many elections and town meetings without incident, and we trust them. And, and I think the clerk works very closely with them, has for years. And so I guess to some extent I, we didn't want to make this about – um, you know, cross-examining volunteers, essentially, because honestly, we won't get people to volunteer to do this again if we make it so. If you make a mistake, you're going to be subject to public scrutiny and, and questioning. They reported to the person who's ultimately responsible for them, which is the, who is the moderator, or one of them reported to the moderator that he didn't count votes. To me, that mm -hmm. hits a threshold of the legislative process wasn't true. Um, that there was an issue with the integrity of town meeting. He said, I didn't count the votes. That, to me, hits the threshold over which you have to make a decision. In the second case, the counter, um, we, we discussed it with him. He clearly understands that the numbers don't add up. He's not exactly sure what may have happened. As you remember, when that article was going, it was it, uh, Article 12 was a hand count. And then there was, um, and there was some confusion there. And then Article 13 came up, and it's possible. The most plausible explanation is that he didn't reset the counter between the yeas and the nays, but he's not exactly sure. So I guess, and, and the clerk did look at the video of the meeting to see if there was something we could glean from that, and she reported to me that um, it really was not illustrative the video. So I guess. When the people who are responsible for doing the counting say, put their names in writing and say, you know what, I'll put it out there, I don't think I did it right, um, or in one case, I know I didn't do it right, and in the other case, I'm not sure what happened, but I don't think it's right, I, I don't, I'm not sure what else, whether evidence is needed or what other evidence we can produce. And if, if the board wants to not take an action, which it does not have to do, because the evidence does, because the evidence or the testimony really doesn't rise to the level of satisfaction, then okay. But when we decided to pursue this, again, to me, it was a threshold question. We had crossed the threshold of the legislative process was compromised, and what do we do about that? And I just wanted to make sure that, as exactly as, as every board member said here, the issue at hand wasn't driving the decision as to whether or not. Um, we should address the, the voting situation, and I mean the article in question. So, um, but that's it. So, some votes weren't counted, some were recorded and or reported incorrectly. Those are the two irregularities. Okay, so the one that's voted in or recorded incorrectly, that's not a fact, because you just said it was possible, the counter said, it is potential. It's mm -hmm. possible. It's, it's not. Possible. It's not a fact. Okay. Yeah. It's it's his belief. So, so let me just let's just because yeah. you know the, the issue is this is that the taxpayer is going to foot the bill for this. That's what the uh, no, don't uh, listen. It, it it is an issue because when we start talking about the integrity of the vote, the integrity of the vote. If it was one vote in favor of the article, you, we wouldn't be here tonight. Because we wouldn't that, be. That that statement. That true. that is absolutely that true. That statement's not that. true. The, the bottom that, line that is this: not is that that's your personal opinion, you Mr. Said Santana. You, we we were just told that there was an irregularity that was, because the story differs a little bit. We were just told that there was an irregularity that was reported to the mm -hmm. town moderator during the meeting. Mm -hmm. What what was the irregularity? Which one? That the votes we just, were counted, or that? If you read the the clerk's timeline, Paul, um, right away after the vote on my side of the room. Okay, which is as we sat there. Yeah, there was okay. firefighters in there and everything. Yep, I right. what you're talking about with section. Yeah. So someone not from that section, someone who was watching, came up to me immediately and said, "Those votes weren't counted." And then I said, "Okay, I'll let the clerk and the moderator. I didn't really know what to do, so I said, "I'll let, I'll let Kathy know, and see what she has to say about it." On my way up. A member of the school committee came over and said, on the other side of the room, that vote count wasn't right. P they double counted. So it was clear there were two things. And, I th and I'm not going to speak for the moderator, but in my mind, the uh, motion to reconsider was supposed to be the remedy for this situation. But the counter, whose letter you have, didn't count that visitor section that time either, and not the visitor section, what he perceived to be the visitor yep. section, which actually contained town meeting voters, 
he didn't count it that time either. And so... And the other section would had to been double counted as well because the numbers are very similar from those two sections. Right, but I think the other thing was in the confusion, a lot of people um, left the room, and that's on them. But, you know, I... I, like I said, there were the, ver the first co the first count reported to the moderator um, was not an accurate okay. count, and that much I'm fairly certain. And the, the last question I have is in the May meeting, our annual town meeting. Can anybody tell me definitively if every vote was counted? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm how asking that a question. I didn't, I'm sorry, I, I'm not talking. No. Just, um, I'm not, I, I don't know. We're talking about disenfranchising voters. Also, that was rich word, that were disenfranchising mm -hmm. we voters. Did, you, we don't have any evidence to, to suggest or any complaints that suggest that those okay. votes weren't accurately counted. That, that's the best answer that you can be given. He's got a comment. Okay. Richard, 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 he's got one more. Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, this is the point of me asking you, Stephen, if you had other information was to... I mean, you can interpret the letter just as well as I can interpret the letter, as well as anybody else can interpret the letter. And again, it's too bad that everybody doesn't have the letter because, you know, it's possible, conditional. Um, the thing, the question I have for the person who would be, uh, who I guess didn't count votes in a section, was that person assigned to that section? Was somebody else counting that section? Did that person see people raising their hand and then not counting? I mean, these are, I mean, these are real obvious questions. The other obvious question I have is, I don't know which, vo sitting here right now, I do not know which votes were hand counted that night and what the votes were. We've been focusing on Article 13, but I'm also of the view if there is something fundamental wrong with the uh, votes, then we should be looking at all the hand count votes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Sorry. Actually, can I finish? Yeah. And then, and Richard, to your point about voters being counted and disenfranchised, this is a very different situation. That's your opinion, Mr. Well, Chairman. let me just explain. If we had the ability to recount the votes, I'd say, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it time and time again with the most meticulous process mm -hmm. possible. There's a whole big difference between getting, between recounting mm -hmm. and re-voting. Mm -hmm. People have the right to have their votes count. They don't right. have the right to vote again. Right. I mean, that's a very different proposition. And so when you talk about disenfranchisement, that's a loaded word. Mm -hmm. It's a very important word. And to put it in a place where it doesn't belong, I, I think is, uh, you know, kind of fanning the flames of, uh, of this issue. Right. So I, you know, like I said, I, what I don't understand is why the town moderator why the town manager has to speak for the town mo moderator about the investigation that he took place. Or why, why we have to, I mean, literally, I'm hearing from the town manager, who heard, from the town moderator, who might have heard from somebody else. That's third hand hearsay. And, and people can have the best intentions of the world, but third hand hearsay is pretty uh, unreliable just because it's a team yeah. game of telephone. Okay. And you, you get lose the ability. Can you get to a point of I, relevance on this? You're, you're just rambling on, I'm afraid. There's, there's, it's not relevance here. We're talking, we're talking about the voter issue, not the no, I'm dialogue. talking about the reliability of the information. That's and right. Well, the, the reliability of the information, <clears throat> you're not even addressing that. You're addressing many other issues. No, wait like, Focus back I, on the I'm, issue. I, I'm talking about hearsay. If you don't mm -hmm. think that bears on the reliability of information, then you and I are just going to well, have to Mr. disagree. Well, Mr. you wants to and I'm not dance gonna characterize all over your what I've comments. said, and you're dancing all over what everybody else has said. It, it, the moderator clearly made a statement at this table. He, what did he, he say? He said exactly what he, what he wanted, and he said, I'm not going to say anything else. So right. he's made a statement to us in, in, in this room. And I, and I know you're uncomfortable that maybe you can't bring him up and question him, but he has chosen to make one statement and to sit okay. back down. All right. And, and that's his I right. Guess, and that is his right, but that doesn't mean what I'm being presented is reliable. 
Well, Mr. Grant, I don't think talking about it 30 minutes is going to change your opinion on what you've got has been reliable or not reliable. We have all spoke two to three times on this issue. We all have the same documents in front of us. We have all known about this information all week. Whether we wanted to believe the information or not is irrelevant. That's a personal decision you're going to have to make. That whether this hit the, we, the, the one thing you failed to say is we are empowered <coughs> to make something happen. We can actually say that we think this was wrong and we will issue a call for a special town meeting. I realize with your issue on the voting, you're saying it's absolutely right. Maybe we haven't disenfranchised our vote, but we have apparently by records of other individuals, we've not at least counted all the votes. Okay. And whether we call it disenfranchising or what, I, okay. that's semantics. But on the factual question of what the votes were mm -hmm. and which articles, I mean, do you think that's relevant? I've, I looked at the meeting today, sir. I mean, you had the option. It's online. I, I looked at the entire meeting and wrote every vote down. I have them in front of me. Richard, briefly, there were three hand counts. Yes, there were three hand and counts. And I am of the, of the opinion if we were going to do it again, all three articles that were subject to a hand count should be done. Oh, absolutely. It's not just one article. There was three hand counts that took place. That are, that I mean, two, two, sorry, two articles. Two, two articles, articles three, three hand, hand counts. counts. Article 12, motion to lay on the table is a hand count. And then Article 13, motion to approve was a hand count. And then the motion to reconsider was a hand count. So it would be two articles. Sorry, thanks. All right. Yes, Mark. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of troubled here because... We've got a couple of allegations that we've come down to two because of the two things submitted. You know, and, and I guess my question is, was the motion to reconsider truly a, 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 a do-over for the motion on the, uh, on the article itself? And if you believe that it was, based on doing things right, you can look at the count and say, even if, and this gets to Mr. Grant's point about a recount rather than a revote, even if a counter did not reset his counts, you could go back and say, instead of 19 votes, it would have been three votes. It still would have failed. So the, the, the key is that- it, it, it failed by one and a half no, votes. No, 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 no. This is the reconsideration. The we vote was 240 to 140. Go over the original vote. And, but, but the not original, the reconsideration. I understand that, but my premise the, is huh? the reconsideration yeah, yeah. was a yeah. remedy for anything that may have happened in the original vote. It was equivalent to having a new town meeting or a new vote if on, the, if on the doors, If the doors had been locked and nobody was allowed to exit, I would agree with you 100%. But, but Richard, but we don't I, lock I the doors when people... They, right. You want sanctity, I'm telling you. But there's no sanctity. That, people I, come, I, I people be, go, people okay. vote on some articles, they don't vote on other Those articles. Those two points are relevant then. No, the, the, the point is vote. that that a vote a, a vote to reconsider. I'm likely to be voting for, for a new town meeting, but I want people to know that a vote to reconsider, okay, is a second chance at this thing. Does that have and it, it does because does it have even bearing if, on the decision. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah, it does. And the reason it does is because you can recount. And the recount says take away the unset counter if you think that happened and it still would have failed. The point is we're, we're, we're grasping at things here that may have been, might have been, I didn't see something from a distance. For people to say I looked across the room and those votes weren't counted to me is, is, is just you know, not, not meaningful, not nearly as meaningful as somebody saying, I didn't count that section. And oh, by the way, is there a reasonable expectation for people sitting in a visitor section to get counted as a votes? As, as a town vote. If they have a green card, there is a reasonable expectation. They're not banned from sitting in that area. It strictly says the visitors well, that, must that, that, sit in that area. Okay. That, and I go there with a visitor, I'm likely going to sit in that area with the visitor. Fine. Um, my point is that we could re recreate this thing if, right. if we want to. I think the, I think the arguments are, are f for asking for a, a new vote or a new town meeting are circumstantial and are hearsay. But nevertheless, because there's any kind of a doubt at all, I, you know, I, I'd like for there to be some definitive decision by the town. Okay. Marie? Um, there were two things you were bringing up, which I don't think are pertinent to this, and that is the reconsideration vote. People did not clearly feel that that was, people voted for the shops and voted against the reconsideration. And too many people left. Uh, we go back down to did it happen and when you have the person who was doing the counting saying it definitely did happen and the second one saying there's a good chance that I made mistakes also I feel we've hit the threshold so 
this whole thing about the reconsideration could be the same. Uh, let's just go to the basic facts, and that are that there are questions on whether the votes were counted, and we should look towards a special meeting. Okay, I we think we should start. Can I ask a procedural yeah. question? Sure. If if this if the remedy is to affect the irregularities of who did or didn't get counted, mm -hmm. and the purpose isn't necessarily to have a revote. Your, you know, the uh, revote. Are we going to invite the same 465 people, or are we open this up to have a new town meeting that could have 2,000 2, people? I'm, just, I'm asking what the, you know, we, we have a, re I'm not listening to the folks out there because I'm, talk I'm no, talking no, no, to the board. It's a moderator question. Moderator okay. question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because this is, if we're looking to remedy a situation, I want to know what, what we're trying, if, if that's the case, then I would agree to it. If the same 465 people were invited. But if we're going to just open this up for another town meeting to have people who, because now the people who may have voted yes or no, if it loses or passes, can say, my vote wasn't counted because I wasn't there at the next meeting. So my question is, if that's not the case, and I don't see Mike, but I mean, if that's not the case, then I'm, I'm going to vote against it. But if it were the case, I would support it, that if the same 465 were there, if, we're, if that's the goal to remedy it. So obviously the goal might not be to remedy that situation that night. Right. Okay, we had we had a three-part agenda. We had the report from the moderator, and we've gone through that. We have a discussion that we've been talking. Is there any other discussion by any select board member? I think we're all set. Okay, the third third part was take any other action deemed necessary relative to the report and the discussion. So at this point, we've had our say. At this point, if there's an action deemed appropriate, I'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Go ahead, Mark. I'm going to make a motion that the select board issue a warrant for a special town meeting and that this warrant include the change in zoning district which was contained in article 13 at the warrant for the special town meeting on November 18, 2014. Further, the select board refer the proposed zoning district change to the planning board for a hearing and recommendation prior to the special town meeting and that the date of the special town meeting set at the de be set at the December 15, 2014 regular select board meeting. Is there a second? Second. Discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion? Mark, is it the uh, motion that... No. Or is that your own? Yeah. It's it's essentially what he had, but not exactly. Okay. It's close. I'll, I'll just did, did that uh, was there exact dates put on that? He mentioned December fifteenth. December fifteenth. No, that the date of the special town meeting be set at our December fifteenth regular select board meeting. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But not the special town meeting itself. No, not the special no. town meeting. Okay. Got, I got gotcha. you. All right. Any further discussion? Okay, we'll uh, call the vote. All in favor? All opposed? Vote carried 3 2. So, Mr. Santiago and Mr. Grant Correct, right. Right. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Uh, we have we have one item, Mr. Sampino. You want to make the sports announcement? No, I'm not going to make it. Uh, folks, I understand, it, and I don't have all the details. I'm likely the worst one to say this, but uh, congratulations goes out to our Longmeadow High School football team. I understand they are on their way to the state championship, uh, which will be held on what three or four weeks from now, guys. Gillette Stadium, December 19th. Uh, December 19th, Gillette Stadium. Congratulations, folks. Yes, one thing. And one more thing. I guess they will be lighting the tree at the green on Sunday at 4 o'clock. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay.